What are you reading that for? It's personal. Ah, uh, sex, you mean? Why is it that everybody assumes that everything is to do with sex? Why is it that everybody assumes that if you've got a problem, it's sex? As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> the thing is, Adrian, sex is nature's trick. It's just bodies. It's fun. It's getting it right and getting it wrong and laughing all the way. I'd like to talk about love rather than just sex, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Love. That's different. That's to do with brain damage and terminal <laughs> lunacy <laughs> and sobbing a lot. Yes, well, your experiences have obviously been less ecstatic than mine. Anyway, I can't understand why you're so cynical about everything. I mean, look at last year, all your conquests. It was a good year last year. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine Shardley, Jean Connaught, Lizzie Haycroft. Brenda Macon. You're forgetting Brenda Macon. Brenda Macon? They wouldn't leave you alone. You must have been getting something right. Not like me. Oh, I see. Is it that you're frightened of women? No, women are wonderful. It's calm and I'm frightened of. <laughs> She's a bit of a goer, isn't she? Jean Connett was like that. I used to plan quiet romantic evenings in the back of my van with a bottle of Blue Nun and a box of milk tray. She had me tie undone before I could get the top off the bottle. <laughs> that's it. That's how it is. Oh, God, that's just how it is. All physical. I've been there. I've been there. I don't get a chance to talk, to think, to plan. Two minutes after we meet, she's checking out me erogenous zones. They have a knack, don't they? That's it, that's it! They have a knack! Soulmate. Then it's the kiss and the whisper. Then it's the eyelashes. Oh, God, the eyelashes. Then it's the little wiggle. It's good news, the wiggle. You're nearly there, then. <laughs> The next thing you know... You're banging away like a couple of road drills, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've been there. It's great, isn't it? Oh. Where's Jack? It's time to take Mum to the supermarket. He's through there. <clears throat> By the way, I meant to say, I've noticed you're reading that book and I've seen where you've marked the paragraphs. The thing is, I can help you out on that, you see. Sex is a bit like eating jelly babies. What you have to do is... It's through there. <laughs> Just ask. Any time. Just ask. How much, love? You've got technology to put it makes. Does it take in washing? £94.67, pence, please. <laughs> Where does she get the money from? That's what I'd like to know. It's her eldest. He's up to all sorts. There's four generations in that family, all screwing the state. No wonder my old man has to pay a lot of tax. Anything over £20, you get a free voucher. The price of food, you should be handing out free pacemakers. <laughs> Did your old man ever tell the taxman about the 200 quid my eldest paid him for the fridge that fell off the back of your old man's lorry? reading that for? I just want to, that's all. There's only one way to have confidence, Adrian. Feel good about yourself? I do feel good about... parts of me. <laughs> then put right the bits of yourself that you don't feel good about. Well, I'm too short for a start. So how do I go about that? And I can't put right the other thing up. I just can't. <laughs> We're not talking about sex again, are we? Haven't you got that right yet? I find it very hard, being a man. <laughs> I find being a man very hard. You're too much of a perfectionist. 
So you've all got to learn about everything. But Leonardo da Vinci drew arms and legs before he painted the Mona Lisa. When you're a boy, you worry about when you're going to do it. When you're a man, you worry about how you're going to do it. And when you've done it, you worry about how everybody else does it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I think? I think it's that girlfriend of yours, Carmen. She talks about it too much. I mean, every time you pick up the phone to her, it's, oh, yes, Carmen, it was wonderful. Oh, yes, Carmen, it'll be wonderful again tonight. Oh, yes, Carmen, tomorrow night will be wonderful too. Don't let her do that to you, Adrian. I shudder to think what she'll be like when the Earth does finally move for us. And it will, sunshine. It will. Oh, and when it does, leave her. Couldn't do that. Well, why would I do that? Couldn't do that. You'll see. You all right there, going lad? There's nothing wrong with me. My lunch wouldn't put right. Roxy? Joey, I've told you not to phone me at work. I should never have given you the number. I know. I know. I'm sorry. It's just that uh, I haven't heard from you since the other night. I wondered why, that's all. There's no why. It was a lovely dinner. A lovely time. <laughs> then why? Sometimes, Joey, things are too nice. I, I don't know what you mean. How can things be too nice? Too nice for what? Roxy, if there's something wrong, just say. I won't hassle you. I only hassle when things are right. I'll see you at seven. You can pick me up here. All right? Fine. Fine. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. Pull out, son. Pull out before hopelessness sets in. Is she back from the supermarket yet? Not yet, Grandad. I have to sit here and wait, I do. Wait for me breakfast, wait for me lunch, wait for me tea. Maybe you ought to try thinking about something else, Grandad. Steady your stomach. What else is there to think about? Me hands are shaky, me eyes are half blind, me heart is wonky, and me legs are knackered. <laughs> and all my other bits have gone into premature retirement. <laughs> think about love. Grandad. Love? Do you want my brain to go and all? <laughs> I talked about love once and I ended up with your granny. She went up that aisle like a bulldog with a bone in its mouth. She never let go until she were drawing her last breath. Yeah, you loved every minute of her. I bet she's up there now, bossing God about. Telling him when to make it rain, when to make it shine. Oh, betide him if he leaves the lavatory seat up. <laughs> Billy, bring your van. I'd rather go down with an overdose of fumes than be jerked to death. <laughs> All right, Grandad. Roast potatoes, cheese pie and broccoli. All right. I don't like broccoli. Roast potatoes and cheese pie. And I'm sick of cheese pie. A lot of roast potatoes, then. <laughs> What is it? What's wrong? She's got a headache. Oh, my God. Now, don't panic, ma'am. Don't panic. Do you want to get into bed, Princess? Hey, put the blanket on and the telly. I've got a modelling job. You just forget modelling for now. What's wrong with her? She all right? She's got a temperature. She went out the other day wearing a little pair of white socks. Her knickers and her socks are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> you got any pains, love? Where are they, sweetheart? She takes hot and cold showers to tighten her skin. You can crush all your working parts to death that way. Go and call the doctor, Jack. And Billy, put the fire on the living room. Aren't we supposed to lie her down on her side and cover her with a blanket? 
That's in case of a road accident, Billy. And wipe your mouth. Only I read somewhere. Billy, fire, OK? <laughs> when did it come on, love? I felt a bit funny yesterday. Sort of dizzy. Should have told us, shouldn't you? Oh, you'd have only stopped me going out. I needed some eyelash curlers. Okay, come on, come on. We'll put you on the sofa. Come on. You've got to make an appointment. How can you make an appointment when you don't know when you're going to be ill? Okay, I'll talk to him. Get him around here, Joey, and tell him that in future we'd like to make an appointment every morning at 10 o'clock just in case one of us takes ill. <laughs> <laughs> that doctor's getting too big for his stethoscope. <laughs> What are you doing? What? You're taking the cherries off all the cakes. Oh. <laughs> Put them back in their original holes, Billy. Uh, yeah. You ought to be in that cot, not her. I'm worried, aren't I? She'll be all right. We all have dizzy spells and headaches. She looked pale. Well, the blood's fighting off the germs, isn't it? It's got a race around her body looking for them. So she'll have less than a face, won't she? And now you tell me there's damp upstairs. You needn't worry about that. I've got to worry, haven't I? It's where Francesca sleeps. She sleeps down here now. It's not right, is it, her sleeping down here? She should have a proper bedroom, a private place. You mean like in your house? If you want a bed to yourself, you've got to book in advance. We all have a bed to ourselves, Julie, every one of us. They're all in the same room, that's the problem. <laughs> anyway, Aveline's got her own room and Francesca's going to have hers. I don't like you looking at me like that, Julie. What have you done? I've got a job. Julie! Before you start telling me that in the great arena of life a woman's place is sweeping up the sawdust, that if I don't stay at home with our child, she'll turn into a retarded hermit. I wasn't going to say that. Yes, you were, Billy. When I stopped breastfeeding her, you said her legs wouldn't grow to the full length. <laughs> when I gave her a dummy, you said it would make her deaf. You keep bringing out this long list of things you've read somewhere. Listen, Julie, I'm a man and you're a woman. I think you are equal to me. I curtsy to you, Billy, but my chastity belt's too tight. <laughs> well, I have modern thoughts and, and a modern outlook. And I won't have you saying I'm anything else, Julie. I'm a man of today, Julie. I don't want you working and you're not going to work. Next you're going to say, my mam doesn't work. No, I'm not. And she doesn't, does she? No, Billy, she doesn't work. Your mam. She does the cooking, does the cleaning, does the ironing, does the washing, does the everything. I'm talking about real work. You all sit around that table like the Last Supper. She comes up with something every breakfast, every lunch, every tea, every dinner. And next door, she's got your granddad, the snapping turtle. <laughs> I don't like you criticising my granddad, Julie. I think about your mum every time I watch those wildlife programmes about the little wren feeding the big cuckoo. Sitting there with its gob eternally open while she rushes about wearing the feathers off her arse. <laughs> My mam, Julie, is happy. She loves her family. She loves cooking and cleaning for us. Then go and live there permanently, Billy. Go back to the womb. You never left it anyway. But I love you, Julie. All right, Princess. Is me lipstick all right? You look fantastic. <laughs> Comb your hair, Freddie Boswell. My hair is Sagittarian hair. It does its own thing. <laughs> Don't put the siren on, love. She's got a headache. Look, we'll see you there, OK? Have you ever done gardening? Not seriously. I've tampered with my granddad's window box. I was looking for someone professional, really. As you can see, it's uh, quite complicated. And you're not very strong looking, are you? I'm very fit, actually. When Christmas comes, I'm the one who has to go to Delamere Forest to pinch the Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm very trustworthy, very honest. Except at Christmas. Uh, I expect you'll do. The mower is electricity powered. And uh, I can always help you sort out the orchids from the weeds. They don't look as though they've done very much. I'm from real estate. I see. That would explain it. Why do you want to be a gardener? Uh, well, I saw the advert about an hour ago. 
I like the open air, the colours, the smells. I like beautiful things. There are some jobs inside the house, too. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. Kitchen shelves, dining room shutters, bedroom doors. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm sure I won't. I don't like Ira Averline sleeping in other people's sheets. <laughs> it's all very clean, Mum. It's a hospital. They disinfect everything. All the same, there's nothing like your own sheets. At least you know no one's died in them. <laughs> We've been here three hours now. Three hours! I'll bet people get better waiting to be seen in this place. <laughs> Do you remember when she was born? Of course I remember when she was born. <laughs> Royal Infirmary, Ward C, little pink bundle, blonde hair. She wasn't pink, she was brown and she had black hair. The pink baby was in the next cot, only you wouldn't know because you were pissed. <laughs> I'm not the only one who got pissed when he became a father. You got pissed when he became a husband. <laughs> I'm not pissed now, am I? You can't forgive, can you, eh? You can't forgive. Any moment now, it'll be Lilo Lil again. Don't you dare mention the name in this hospital where my daughter is ill. I'll go and get her some coffee. Keep her garb occupied. OK, ma'am, one thing at a time now. How is she, Doctor? She's still running a temperature, so we'll keep her in for observation. We've given her some medication and we'll carry out some tests tomorrow. All right? Have you any idea what might have caused it, Doctor? Oh, we won't know, I'm afraid, until after the tests. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes? Thank you. <laughs> the patient, Aveline Boswell, is my sister, his sister, her daughter. So we are rather interested parties. Would you like a word with the ward, sister? No, thanks. You'll do. If you can keep still long enough. Now, I know that the majority of people you get in here are not very knowledgeable about their anatomy and that they surrender themselves to your obvious superiority. But we are different. We happen to know our arse from our elbow. <laughs> and my brother here could give the kiss of life to a swordfish. <laughs> So what we'd like to know is... OK, Jack. Watch Mum now. Greetings. <laughs> Please forgive my brother. He's feeling a bit over-emotional. However, to continue his concern, we would like to ask certain questions and point out certain requests. How high is her temperature? What test will you be giving her? What in particular will he be looking for? How long will they take? What kind of medication is he receiving? Can we be certain that all needles are absolutely sterile? <laughs> if you should require blood, would you bear in mind we have enough in our house to save the world? <laughs> are the eggs free range? <laughs> and when finally you come to your conclusions, could we have a second opinion, please? <laughs> Thank you. The thing is, I'm no good at it. Mm, and who's been telling you that? Nobody. I just know. A man knows these things. You're so pretty. <laughs> have you any brothers and sisters? I have a sister. Three brothers. A mum and a dad and a granddad. And a dog. Yes. You can relax now. I'm not going to kiss you again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It was my birthday yesterday. Oh, many happy returns. <laughs> There won't be that many, I'm afraid. I'm what they call middle-aged now. I experienced a curious kind of panic. Will anyone ever fancy me again?
There is strange breed, the middle-aged, a mixture of green and yellow grass. If you kiss us, we slap your face. If you don't kiss us, we kiss you. Then we slap your face. <laughs> it's a ritual we go through. You didn't slap mine. No. I couldn't quite decide whether anyone was actually there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'll wait for someone more experienced to do my gardening. I hope you can find someone who can do the job. It's very physical. Gardening. <laughs> right, uh, when you leave, close the gate, won't you? I will, yeah. And I hope you... We overcome our little problem. Oh, uh, that. Yeah. I was lying, actually. <laughs> we all play our little games, don't we? Um, I'm a bit of a tiger, actually. A bit of a tiger? <laughs> the whole tiger. I'm the whole tiger, actually. Oh, good. At least, that's what they tell me. When you finish your additive-free biscuits and your ale grey tea, see what your belly has to say about that. <laughs> you say there's an improvement? Oh, good. The temperature's down. The test will be through in a couple of days. Thank you, sister. Goodbye. Let us pray. We thank thee, Father, for the good news. And please make avalanche tests. Is it negative or positive, Joey? I get mixed up. Negative will do, ma'am. Negative, Father. And bring her home soon, safe and well. Amen. 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 You can have your dinner, aren't you, love? Yeah. Where are you going? Billy, Joey does not like to discuss his private affairs. Not like some. It's all right. I'm not going to argue. She'll get tired eventually. <laughs> Where's our Adrian? With Carmen. He prefers sex to food. <laughs> hey, remember, remember the days of preferring sex to food? Yeah, thin and happy we were. Why couldn't you have done both? Because unlike you, our girlfriends didn't have a house. I had to make do with the railway embankment. <laughs> remember all the coal he used to bring home, Dad? He used to stack it behind the railway station. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> you know, if we knew then what we know now, we'd have gone electric. <laughs> I used to stagger home after a passionate experience with a sack of coal on me back. <laughs> you don't have any luck, do you? I mean, what with railway embankments and no dinner? I mean, soon you'd be too old to do anything, and you can't do much with the little time you've got left because of AIDS. I'm lucky I've got Julie. I wouldn't look so smug, Sunshine. Seeing as Jack and I are going to be denied the pleasures of procreation, it's up to you now to make sure the world doesn't run out of Boswells. OK. I'll see you, ma'am. I'll pop in the CR. I'll have a line on me way. All right, love. Tell her we'll see her later. Our agent was telling me about this woman. She lives in this big house up by Croxford Road. She advertised for a gardener, and he applied for the job. He'd only been there two minutes when she tried to seduce him in the greenhouse. <laughs> Our Adrian, he looks as pure and fragile as a raindrop. The tart. I know the lady, I swept her dry for her once. Once, I bet. 
She's like one of them spiders that makes a web and drops it on the insects as they pass by underneath it. Well, she wouldn't have any trouble hauling you in, would she? She could do it with a hairnet. <laughs> Look at that. She serves me pudding as if it was a hand grenade. I've been thinking. Oh, God. He's going to say something so profound, all the great poets will turn in the graves. No. Why didn't you have your dinner first and then go to the railway embankment? Or go to the railway embankment first and then have your dinner? I told you. Can you hear all the gravestones toppling? <laughs> that was wonderful, Adrian. Yeah, it was. I told you, didn't I? I told you it would be. Yeah, you did. Oh, this is our lucky place, this. Yeah, it is. Adrian? Adrian? Where are you going? Adrian? Why? I love you, Roxy. Because I'm married. That's why. Are you awake? Yeah. I did it. <laughs> I did what you said. I walked away. I left her, like you said. I did it. <laughs> You're always right, Joey. Yeah. 